This is the uh, window we wrote you about. Okay. So what do you got going on here? We think the previous owner has vented the dryer out through there. Well, that's pretty common. Yeah. Now I look at it and the jam itself looks pretty good from in here. I don't see any rot and the sash looks pretty good also. So what we can do is we can take this sash right out and just replace the center pane of glass. You up for that? Sounds good. To get started, we need to remove the screws from the hinges that go into the jam. And then take out these screws that someone put in through the sash, probably to make it more weather tight. All right, well, it doesn't look like this center pane of glass had a dry vent in it. I think it was just a broken pane of glass and they taped it up. Yep. All right, the first thing is let me give you a little bit of window anatomy because it's good to know what the pieces are in case you ever have to fix them. What's in the opening up there is your jam. At the bottom is the sill and at the two sides in the header are just the jam. All right, so now we have the whole piece is a sash. Individual panes of glass, also known as lights of glass. And these wooden strips right here that divide the glass and hold it into place are actually called muttons. And the glass is held into the muttons with glazing compound or putty. What we need to do is scrape out that old putty and remove the glass. We're going to keep a vacuum going to suck up any of the dust. We want to make sure we use a HEPA vac. All right, we've got all the old glazing compound out of the opening where the middle glass was. Now we're going to take a measurement for that glass. So the height is 12 and an eighth. All right, so what I did is I bought a pane of glass that's 12 inches off the shelf and it fits in the opening very nice. So that eighth of an inch difference is perfect to allow for the expansion and contraction of the wood in the summertime when the wood expands from humidity. We couldn't get a piece the width that we wanted, so I got a piece that's 16 inches. So now I'm going to measure the width, and that is 10 and a 16th. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure 9 and 15 sixteenths of an inch and cut our glass. That way it'll fit right into the open and allow for the expansion and contraction of the muttons. This is the tool that we're going to use to cut the glass. This is a glass cutter. It has a little carbide wheel on it right there. That little wheel's going to cut through the glass? Well, it's not going to cut through the glass. It's only going to score it. Once we score it, we snap it off. All right, so I'm going to use my straight edge. Now what we have to do is allow for the offset of the wheel to the edge of the glass cutter. Just like that, making sure the square is tight to the edge of the glass, and I want to hold it firmly. Before I cut it, I need to lubricate the wheel with some cutting oil. So I dip it. And now I'm going to score it. I want to push down firmly and make one cut and one cut only. So now I'm just going to take it, pick up the glass, bring it over to the edge, and I want to line up my line about with the edge of the table. I want to make sure I'm over the edge. I'm going to pick up and drop it, pushing down with both hands at the same time. Pick it up, push it down. Nice. And there's your pane of glass. So we're going to use a latex glazing compound right out of the gun. That way we won't have to prime or seal the wood. Now we're ready to set the glass. I'm going to hold it in and then drop it down gently. Work it back and forth. You can see the glazing compound oozing out. Now I just work it back and forth, working that glazing compound down and around. Now to hold the glass into position, we're going to use these glazing points right here. And all they are, you can see there's a little leg on them, and I can use that to push it into position. So I take it, lay it on the glass, and I take my putty knife, I put right on that shelf like that, push it in, and I want to do about a third of the way up. Push one in there. I don't want to push down too hard because I don't want to crack the glass. Bring it over about a third of the way down and push it in, work it back and forth gently. Okay, so I have two on that side. I'm going to put two on this side. Back and forth, working it in. Now it's seated. 
Okay, so now I want to put one in the middle on the bottom. Take it, again, back and forth, gently pushing it in, and one on the top. All right, so now that glass can't push out while we're working on it until the glazing dries. All right, now I'm ready to put another bead on top, but I want to angle it so it comes up to the top of the mutton, down to the glass. Now across the bottom. All right, so now we're going to clean that up with a putty knife. All right, so I'm temporarily screwing this sash back into the old opening, and I'm going to lock it because I didn't want to leave this open for three or four days. It's going to take three or four days for that new glazing compound to dry. After you take it out of the opening, get a razor blade and clean up all those rough edges, prime it, and paint it. And I think you're going to notice a big difference because we have replaced the glass and with the new putty around the opening, you're going to feel less drafts. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Glad I could help. Nice fix, Tommy. Thanks. It is a pleasure watching you do even the <laughs> simplest of tasks and, and not an expensive fix either. No, and it's actually a pretty easy fix. I mean, with the glazing compound, the glass, and the tips to hold the glass in place, you're probably looking at less than $30. Right. And I think the most intimidating thing is whether or not you feel comfortable cutting the glass, which is actually pretty easy to do too. Right. But if you're not comfortable cutting the glass, you can go to a hardware store with the right dimensions and they'll cut a piece for you. So using what you taught us, you can fix just just, there are millions of windows that are built like this. Oh, yeah. um, and if it's single pane and it's got that glazing, you can do what you just did. Absolutely. But recently, last 20, 30, 40 years, our windows have changed significantly, oh, right? Exactly. And yeah. it's typical now that we have two panes of glass, insulating sometimes glass, three. sometimes three. Yeah. That's a whole different fix. Oh, absolutely. Right. So what you do is you get the sash out, you get the dimensions, you go to the manufacturer and say, I need a new window. Okay. And they get it, and then you have to screw or attach the new one back into the old one. So it's not going to be as inexpensive as this fix. Absolutely um, not. <laughs> but there are still millions of these windows out there, so you're going to be able to use those techniques on a lot of windows. Oh, yeah. All right, nice job, good information as always. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.